So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and today I'm going to be showing you how you can run Minecraft natively on Apple Silicon. Now this is really exciting stuff. A little while ago I got my hands on one of the new M1 MacBook Airs. Overall it's a great device and of course it's a brand new instruction set. Uh, Apple switching over from Intel to their own in-house processors and of course this means that they're using ARM instead of the x86 architecture. Now ARM has traditionally been viewed as you know the low power um, sort of mobile chipset uh, but really that's not inherent to the instruction set itself that's just where it's been used mostly so far because well Intel and AMD well they've been doing desktop chips for for many years now uh, and so now Apple's bringing over ARM to their computers, to the Macs, and so far it's been amazing. The transition's going really well. And they have this software called Rosetta. Rosetta's incredible. What it does is it actually translates x86 software right before you run it to the new ARM instruction set, uh, just in case you want to run an old Intel application on your new Apple Silicon Mac, in case the developer hasn't recompiled it yet. And there are lots of different great examples of different software that runs amazing under Rosetta. Things like like Zoom and Discord and previously Google Chrome and these sorts of things uh, work really well through Rosetta because they haven't yet been compiled for ARM. Now, of course, the hope is that within the next couple of months to years, all these different applications that we use will become universal applications, meaning they run both on Intel and ARM. They've been compiled for both, uh, both uh, instruction sets. And then in the further future, after a couple of years, they will be exclusively for Apple, the ARM architecture, kind of like the transition from PowerPC to Intel. Now, there is one application, though, that I really wanted to get running natively using ARM code, and that is Minecraft. Now, the reason for that is because Rosetta is great, of course, it, it has pretty good performance. Uh, but remember, though, that because we're translating instructions from one instruction set to another, we're still fundamentally losing a little bit of performance. Uh, usually, Rosetta apps will run at about 80% of the original Intel performance. However, with Minecraft, I don't want to lose any performance, right? I want to be pushing this processor to its max. I want to be getting the most frame rate I possibly can. I don't want to be dropping any frames. So how can I do that? Well, the hope is that eventually uh, there will be official builds of Minecraft and all of its dependencies for Apple Silicon. But until that happens, I don't just want to wait. I want to play the game. And so what I did is I took Minecraft 1.16.4 and all of its dependencies and I recompiled them from scratch to run natively on Apple Silicon. I think it's really exciting stuff. Uh, now this was a little bit more involved than just going into the dependencies and compiling them because there are a couple different things that sort of work against me here. First of all, we're transitioning from Mac OS X or Mac OS X uh, to Mac OS 11 this year. So with the Big Sur update, it's no longer 10.x for your uh, version numbers for the operating systems, it's rather 11.x. This means that a lot of different dependencies don't know where to look for, for example, SDKs because they all usually come with the 10. Dot prefix, not the 11. Dot prefix. Uh, similarly, pretty much every single dependency expects that if you're on Mac, you've got to be using x86 because all Macs so far have been Intel. And so I've got to modify a lot of different build environments to get it all to work with all these new updates that are here. But I did get it working in the end. Now, there's another challenge on top of that though, and that is that while I can get it running locally on my system, you may have seen the teaser video that I released a little while ago, it's another challenge altogether to actually distribute that running application. Because then what I've got to do as a developer is I've got to do things like code sign and notarize in order to make it so that the application that I build actually runs on your computer. Now before I get to why that's so much of a challenge, let me take a little step back and talk a little bit more about the Minecraft architecture. There are really two different applications when you take a look at the world of Minecraft. There's the launcher and then there's the actual Minecraft game. Minecraft itself is written in Java and it has a couple of dependencies written in C which are native code, um, which, I need to, which it needs to call in order to have high performance graphics and things like this. But then the launcher, well, that's just something you can download from the Minecraft official website. The launcher doesn't actually contain the game. The launcher is only responsible for doing things like allowing you to sign into the game and then actually invoke the game Java in order to get it to run on your computer. Now, there are also different open source launchers that exist. So, for example, there's MultiMC, which is a launcher that you can download the code for from GitHub in case you don't want to use the official Minecraft one. Um, and you can use that to actually, you know, log in and uh, edit your Minecraft jar files and do things like modding and, and things like this. 
and it's really useful in some cases. But the launcher in this specific case for Apple Silicon is actually another bit of overhead because the launcher has its own dependencies. For example, MultiMC depends on a library called Qt and it uses Qt for a bunch of different things including actually showing itself in a window on screen. So what I've done for you is I've gone ahead and made it super, super simple to run Minecraft on Apple Silicon. It is exclusive to version 1.16.4 for now, but I may end up updating it in the future. If you have any requests for, for, for specific versions, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below and I can try to give you uh, versions that'll actually run on Apple Silicon. Uh, but the idea is that all you gotta do is run a couple of bash scripts through your terminal and you will get Minecraft running natively on Apple Silicon. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. It's just like two commands. So let me show you how you can go ahead and do this. Let's take a look at my Mac. All right, so now as you can see on my Mac over here, I've got uh, just a single folder on my desktop called MC Apple Silicon. This is actually in the description. You can go ahead and download this exact folder um, and within it, you get a bunch of different things that I ship with it. Now included in these things are, for example, a couple of Python packages, a new launch.jar file, um, a Minecraft folder, and a bunch of Python scripts that'll actually help us uh, in getting the environment set up. Now, what do all these different files do? Well, what I had to do is sort of write my own custom mini launcher that doesn't use a GUI, but rather uses a bunch of Python and bash scripts in order to invoke the game directly. Now, this is of course, a lot more complicated than it might sound because a lot of this is very undocumented and not a lot of people actually take the time to document how exactly you can call Minecraft natively here um, or, or rather directly should I say. Uh, so what I had to do was sort of go through the multi-MC source code and extract a couple of components that I thought were really useful. In specific, new launch.jar is a component of multi-MC that I've gone ahead and taken and used for my application. So now let me actually show you how you can get Minecraft running. All right, so there are really three steps. The first thing you gotta do is download the Minecraft libraries. Second thing you gotta do is download the Minecraft assets. And the third thing you gotta do is launch the game. That's all there is to it. Let's take a look. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your terminal and you're going to CD into the directory uh, that, that you just downloaded. So you will have downloaded a zip file from the, down, from the description of the video. Um, once you extract the zip file, you should have the MC Apple Silicon folder. Uh, now what you can do is you can simply type CD into your terminal and then take this folder and drag it into your terminal like so. And when you CD into it, you should now be within this, this, this folder. Now to start off, let's actually go ahead and download some libraries. So what you're gonna do is go CD libraries and there we go, you're now in the libraries folder. Now if you go into your finder and you take a look at the libraries folder, by default there should be two files in it. There's lwjglfat.jar and that is what I've compiled, right? That is a jar file containing references to a bunch of classes um, or containing the source code really for all the classes um, that Minecraft is actually going to use to interface with lwjgl. Uh, and then of course there's also a download.sh file which will go ahead and download all the different um, important dependencies and libraries from the official Minecraft. Minecraft website. And so in order to actually run the script and download the dependencies, simply go sh download.sh and there we go. It's going to start downloading all these different dependencies. There are a couple different libraries that it's going to need to download. It's also downloading the official game file. Um, so just wait for that to go ahead and complete and right after that you should be good to go ahead to the next step, downloading your assets. All right, once your libraries are done downloading, the next step is to download the assets. So go ahead and run cd space dot dot, that's gonna bring you back directory. And then once you do that, simply run python3 download assets dot py. Now when you run this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna download essentially all the different resources that Minecraft uses in the game. Uh, now remember that Minecraft, of course, uses a bunch of different, well, what they're called assets. So for example, when you break a block, it makes a sound, or there's music in the background, or the textures for all the different blocks. These are all called assets. Uh, and so, of course, I can't give you those assets directly already in this package because that's not legal. Um, that's Minecraft property, not mine. Uh, and so I can't just give it to you, unfortunately. 
However, by running this script, within just around two minutes, it should go ahead and download all the assets for you. As a matter of fact, in the little time that I've explained what assets are, um, it's already done more than half of the assets. There's about 26-ish hundred of them. Um, it's already, you know, close to being done. Um, and then once it actually downloads this, you're actually pretty much ready to go ahead and play the game. Um, now there is one more dependency just to sort of let you know in the, in the meanwhile, um, and that is the Azul Zulu JDK. Now you don't need to worry about what that means in case you're not interested, but the basic idea is that of course Minecraft runs on Java and therefore you need a version of Java that itself runs natively on Apple Silicon, otherwise, the game's not gonna run natively. <laughs> and so I actually do ship the Azul Zulu JDK with this package as well. So you don't need to download anything. You don't need to you know, get anything installed yourself. All you gotta do is download the package, run three commands, and you're good to go. So it's almost done downloading the assets. Once it's done, let's go ahead and continue. All right, as you can see, it's done downloading. Now it doesn't just download like one at a time since there's like 2,600 of them. It actually downloads about 20 at a time. It'll start 20 processes to actually start downloading um, and then spin them down once they're done their individual chunks. Um, but that's, that's how it actually goes ahead and downloads its dependencies. Now that we're done that, you can go ahead and actually launch the game. Now the way that you would do this using the script is actually pretty simple. So I've set up a little launcher that you can actually invoke from the command line. So all you gotta do is do sh launch.sh. And then here's the interesting part. You give it your email address over here and you give it your password over here. So this is the email address and the password associated with your Minecraft account. Now this email address and password, you can take a look at the script. It goes nowhere except to the official Mojang authentication servers. Now this is not stored anywhere. It's not sent to any other server. You can take a look at the source code. All it's doing is it's sending it over to the Mojang authentication servers. It's getting your user UDID, which is the unique identifier for your username. And it's also going ahead and taking uh, your, uh, your access token, which is what it actually uh, uses to authenticate against, of course, Mojang's authentication service inside of the game, and it goes ahead and runs it for you. Now, you would actually go ahead and run this command. However, I wanna show you actually launching it without necessarily showing you my email address and password. So what I've done is I've put those into environment variables, so I just do this but what you would do is actually put your email address and your password enclosed in single quotes. That's really important. Your email address and your password enclosed in single quotes. So watch this, I'm gonna go ahead and run and at first it's gonna look like nothing's happening, but right as you run that command, there we go. Minecraft is now running natively on Apple Silicon. All right, you can maybe hear that, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn down my volume there. But there we go, Minecraft is now running natively on Apple Silicon, and that's all it took you, right? I've gone ahead and compiled all the dependencies that you need, everything, uh, and shipped them in that package. And all you gotta do now uh, is run those three commands to download the things that I can't ship you, um, and you get Minecraft running natively. Uh, now just to sort of show you that this is indeed working, I can create a new world for YouTube. Um, you know, create the new world, it'll generate it pretty quickly. After it generates, I can go ahead and actually, you know, move around in the world. And uh, right now, just to keep in mind uh, that I am recording a video, like I'm recording the screen as, as we play. And so keep in mind that it is gonna be a little bit uh, laggier than if I weren't, but it still is absolutely incredible performance. So like if I go into video settings, um, I'm gonna turn, you know, render distance up to maybe like, um, th actually let's start off with 12 and then I'll bump it up and show you what the performance is like. I'll make it unlimited max frame rate. I'll bring the brightness to bright, turn off V-Sync, um, maybe increase the GUI scale a little bit, even though that shouldn't really um, affect performance. Uh, and let's just go ahead and continue. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's super smooth. We're not dropping any frames. Uh, take a look at the FPS counter. We're currently at 90 FPS-ish uh, on average, I guess, or maybe more like 80 on average um, while I'm recording, that is. And uh, for a MacBook Air with no fans that's currently being you know, actively used, that is incredible performance. My MacBook Pro probably couldn't reach, a 16 inch MacBook Pro probably couldn't reach that level of performance. And it's all thanks to the fact that this is running natively on Apple Silicon. Um, now, just in case you are curious, if I go ahead and go to video settings and bring this up to like 32 chunks, I expect performance to, oh, it actually is still pretty great. Um, we drop below 60 just now, drop below 50 even, or we're at 40-ish. 
but considering that we're bringing the render distance up to 32, it's still incredibly smooth. This is not only playable, it's actually really nice. Um, and so that's running Minecraft natively on Apple Silicon. Now, of course, if you have any questions or any um, suggestions as to different versions you wanna see ported to Apple Silicon or different things you wanna see done that maybe I haven't shown you how to do yet, feel free to leave that in the comments section below and I'd absolutely love to show it to you. Of course, do subscribe stay to stay tuned for more updates like this one on uh, running Minecraft on not only Apple Silicon but more exotic architectures in the future as well. I'm sure that'll be fun. Uh, but without any further ado though, I really do hope you enjoyed that tutorial. All the download links will be in the description below as well as the GitHub that I mentioned before in case you just want to get started immediately working with this. Apart from that though, again, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you very much for joining in today. If you did enjoy, please do make sure to subscribe. It really does help out a lot. Uh, and of course, do turn on notifications to be notified whenever I release content just like this. Do like the video if it did help you and you did enjoy as well uh, as that, again, does help me out a lot. Feel free to comment if you have any questions or suggestions or reach out to me. Uh, and thank you very much for joining. Goodbye.